Catholic service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All this week, we're going to be looking at Christ is risen, then, now, and forever. We're going to continue with two stanzas of our hymn. We'll sing two at the beginning and two at the end. So we'll sing the first two stanzas of hymn 438. about what that song actually meant and you think about what the 70s were like of course speculation came out about all kinds of drugs and things like that but there was a person who said okay we got to get to the bottom of this we got to find out what the words actually mean so they interviewed Roger Waters and this is part of the interview that he came up with he said the song's really about depersonalization and emotional detachment and if you look at the highlighted part the song explores the emotional numbness that can result from trauma, mental health struggles, or simply the pressures of modern life. Then he said it was a way for him to shield himself from the pain and chaos of the world. Does that sound much different than today? Does that sound much different than the chaos of the world today and all the stress and mental health struggles that we all deal with in this world? So what's depersonalization? That's a big word. Well, depersonalization is the things that just don't feel real. Physical numbness, lack of emotion. You ever felt like that before? Coincidentally, there's a book called Comfortably Numb. And it's a study of apathy in Malachi. Christians sometimes get apathetic about things around them. That the chaos of the world is so troublesome and the mental health struggles that I'm going through get so hard to deal with that I'm just apathetic. Well, what's apathetic mean? Lack of interest, enthusiasm, concern. Does that sound familiar? I'm feeling rather apathetic today. About what? Politics, climate, COVID, war, natural disasters, the economy, voting, immigration, your job? Doesn't matter. 
get it? It's supposed to be a joke, right? It's supposed to be a joke. He's feeling apathetic. And she says, about what? Nah, it doesn't matter. That's apathy's definition. Lack of concern. What causes apathy? Traumatic events. According to the Cleveland Clinic in March of 2023, traumatic events in your life could cause you to be apathetic. And it doesn't have to be clinically diagnosed. It could be just things that are going on in your life that you just feel that way. Things in your life make you feel apathetic. Don't care. As I thought about this, and I thought about all the emotions that sometimes come to me, two questions came to mind. When you're in that moment, these might be the questions you're feeling, right? How could this be happening? In a traumatic event, you might ask yourself, how could this be happening to me? It doesn't feel real. I want you to put yourself and think of a moment in your life that was traumatic. That you actually might have said those types of questions. And I want you to think about the disciples and the women that went to the tomb on Easter Sunday. What were they thinking? They certainly had a traumatic event. They saw their best friend, their teacher, Jesus himself, brutally murdered, brutally crucified. And they had to rush to bury him because of all the events that were going on. That had to be a traumatic event. So what went on between Friday and Sunday with those women and the disciples? What was going through their head? It's definitely a traumatic event. Put yourself in their shoes. Relate your situation that you thought of throughout your life that was traumatic and put you into that state of apathy, comfortably numb, and see what they thought as they went through Friday to Sunday, as you read here. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked into the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. And the disciples went back to where they were staying. The book of Luke describes that, that word believed in there as bewilderment. Luke 24, 12 says this, Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. He still didn't get it. I look back and I say, how can they not get it? Jesus came right out and said, hey, I'm going to die. And they still didn't get it. In fact, Peter said, scolded him. If you remember, he said, Jesus, don't say that. You're not doing that. And Jesus called him <coughs> Satan. Peter was getting in the way of the important work of saving you and me. And nothing was going to stop Jesus from doing that. Not Peter. Not the people who put him on the cross. But the disciples were still here, right? How could this be happening? doesn't feel real. Where is Jesus? Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. Is she comfortably numb? Is she sitting in a state right now that she can't even recognize her best friend? He's standing right in front of her. There's no question she is not in the right state of mind, right? Now, the fact is that Jesus may 
we don't know for sure, but kept her from recognizing him. But my guess is, is that she's in that state of mind, this can't be happening, it doesn't feel real. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. What's it going to take to get you out of that state of mind? Out of apathy, out of comfortably numb? It's Jesus. In one word, he broke Mary out of that comfortably numb mindset that she was in. He just said, Mary. He does the exact same thing to you. He calls you by name and pulls you out of whatever depth that you are in. Whatever traumatic event that you're going through, he pulls you out of it with one word. He calls you by name. Change this tone. Change the tone, change the tone to something that's positive, that's like exciting. How could this be happening? Jesus took away all my sins. Is this real? Yes. Here's opposites of comfortably numb. Pick one. In fact, I'll give you some help. Are you informed? Yep. You know all about Easter. That should excite you. That should make you actively go out and want to tell other people. I don't know what the disciples were thinking. I don't know what the women were thinking. Scripture doesn't tell us. But I do know this. The first Easter morning, God filled the earth with hope so real, joy so pure, love so true, our hearts still rejoice today. That gets you out of being comfortably dumb. We'll sing the last two stanzas of our hymn. 